The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Good morning. Happy Friday. It is... Friday. Friday the 13th. <laughs> is that a fry yay if it happens on the 13th? I don't know. I'm a bit nervous about that. Or do you have to just say it with like a question mark like fry yay? Is it fry yay? I don't know. If you don't know it's Friday the 13th though, then it can just be fry yay and the day goes on without it. All right. We'll break it down. We'll break it down. Though. It's 532 <laughs> right now. We did not get a raise. We we might get a little scolding two minutes late here. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, hey, you might notice a couple extra dollars in your your bank account this morning, Steph. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, at least I did. Maybe I'm just special. Um, the <laughs> government of Canada, they dropped down the Climate Action Initiative payment, and I got a couple, no, only, it was like 150 bucks in my bank account. That's great. I was going to say a couple hundred, but no, didn't top that 200 mark right there. Uh, politics confuse me, though. It's just like, uh, hey, uh, you participated in some climate stuff as a province of Alberta. You probably got taxed on something. We're going to give it back. I was like, what? Why did you take it in the first place? <laughs> I don't know. It confused me. Hey, I'll take 150 bucks. Yeah, I'm with you. I have no idea, but sounds good. Make it rain. <laughs> make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it rain. <laughs> it is Friday the 13th today. Of course, a day uh, wrapped in superstition. Mm-hmm. And it, there are ways that you can improve your luck, Sean. Oh, please tell me. I always love to just, anything I can do to make the day better a little bit. All right. Well, I need you to take your shirt off and put it back on inside out. <laughs> okay. Aggressive. <laughs> That's what they say. Wear your shirt inside out today. Yeah, they're going to tell me to take my pants off as well? Nope. That's not on the list, Sean. You can Jeez. keep that lower half dress. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, on your lower half, you should put an acorn in your pocket. Oh. I don't know where you're going to find an acorn. Yeah. I don't for know those if I've warmer, seen an oak tree in Fort McMurray. For those warmer communities. That's a warmer community luck charm. <laughs> yeah. Go for a walk. Um, and then buy Farmer's Almanac's good luck bracelet to help you Shut out. up. No. Yeah. No. And buy our merchandise. <laughs> that will definitely steer you away from anything happening on Friday the 13th. <laughs> what? Did something I haven't done in a really long time yesterday, Steph, and that was dust off and bring out my passport. Ooh, you, where are you going? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not that exciting. Um, oh. I was getting a criminal record check what? done. <laughs> Do you <laughs> need it, your passport for a criminal record check? No, it was just two pieces of ID. I was like, well, I know where my ID is for my driver's license, and I know where my passport is. So that both has like my face on it and everything and all my information. I was like, that's Probably the two easiest things. Oh, that's so sad to bust out your passport and then not get to go somewhere nice and warm right now. Right? Not enter my passport number for a flight or something or the other. It's just like, come on. And the thing about my passport, when was the last time I used that? Holy moly. Four, five years ago? I don't know. This uh, is getting depressing. The pages in it were just hard. <laughs> Opening it up is <it> like... <laughs> <laughs> Hit with a cloud of dust. I was like, well, that like sucks. Like an old forgotten library book. <laughs> Thank goodness I paid for the 10-year one so I can never use it. Like, jeez. Oh, no. Well, it's been a long wait. I've been hearing about the Arctic Winter Games coming to our region for years. Mm -hmm. But the countdown is on. We are 15 days away. Yeah, look at that. 15 days, 20 hours. I love that. Lots to get done, too. Very much to get done, specifically on my team. <laughs> yeah, what did you sign up for? Where are you again? I am the chair of the broadcast committee, and I just am overseeing volunteers for people who are willing to be camera operators. Mm, yeah, so I, I signed up to work under you. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's you, pending, Sean. though, because I'm getting a criminal record check, so we'll see what happens. I can't, can't remember everything. You know, maybe some things happened in my are past. Are you trying to say that you might have uh, been a criminal in your past life yeah, in the past we'll, five years? <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll leave it up to, we'll leave it up. Okay, okay. But if you are thinking, oh, I would like to volunteer for the Arctic Winter Games, and perhaps you think that Sean and I are fun enough that you might be, want to be on our team, um, camera operator is actually a really easy job. Mm -hmm. I, I would say it's a pretty cushy job. Mm -hmm. Not only are you going to be inside, no mm -hmm. matter what, you also just have to pan a camera back and forth. So you get to watch <laughs> the hockey game and follow the puck. It's on a tripod, you're just following the puck. Yeah. Um, there's 
what else? What it was it was there? pretty easy to to sign up as a volunteer. The website's very friendly and everything when you go to sign up there. And uh, when you go, it gives you three options of what you want to volunteer for. Make sure camera operators number one, obviously. Step. Yeah, and I mean honestly, for two and three, just put that as as it too. Just make sure you get on our team. <laughs> camera operator, what do you want to be second? My only option is camera operator. I'd like to do that again for number three too. <laughs> yeah, don't don't get the temptation of village mayor on there. That's. <laughs> <laughs> totally asinine that you would want to do that. Um, but then, yeah, and then like signing up for like a criminal record check, they give you a free one through your email. Print that off, bring it to the police station. I just did it yesterday and bring some government ID with you. It took me five minutes to fill out the form and then they'll contact me within a week, essentially, is what they said. I get that, bring it down to the office or scan it to the office and boom you'll start scheduling your shifts yeah exactly but it does take about a week to get that criminal record check and being that we are on the 15 day <laughs> countdown don't sleep on this please come and help us this is the biggest event that our yeah. region has ever seen it is going to be so fun and the fact that it's been prepared for for years we've been seeing signs about it for years you know don't miss out on it it's nearly a week and it's really cool to be on the back end and see how things are going as well if working with sean and i didn't sound like enough of an incentive if you do two shifts you get like a really great yeah. puffer coat arctic winter games branded it says time to shine on the back it's really nice there's scarves there's water bottles and you also get a nice long sleeve shirt as well so full on if Feeling like volunteering wasn't a reward enough, you also get rewarded with winter clothes. Big shout out to a professor down in Calgary. He has this obsession with just going through old newspapers and archives and finding fun facts about the past. Oh, okay. And his name is Paul, so shout out Paul. Hey Paul, thanks. One of the things he did on January 1st that I just stumbled upon right now was he went and found predictions made in 1923. 100 years ago, people wow. were trying to predict what the world would look like 100 years in advance. 1923, I can't even fathom. Yeah, for real. There's hardly that many folks left that were alive in 1923, and they certainly weren't able to hold a pen back then. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bunch of newspaper articles. Let's just start breaking it down. One person said in 1920, or yeah, 1923, work days are only going to be four hours long. Long are the days of drudgingly hard work because he, they said election. Electricity will be the reason why. Wow. I mean, I like the way he thinks. We certainly have like come a long way with robots and stuff, but it doesn't seem to be shrinking the workforce enough to only need four-hour humans a day. Yeah, yeah. So I think they said just electricity would kind of make everything easier in the future. Okay. Uh, but it just, yeah. So It has made a lot of things easier, right, uh, yeah, for exactly. sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, the next one here that we have is that the trends, a little, little style, a little trend. Uh, women are going to start shaving their heads by the year 2023 and their teeth, they're going to start blackening them. Interesting. Black teeth and shaved heads for women only. Okay. Okay. I mean, there was that trend where people were shaving half their head. I still see some oh, folks yeah. doing that as well as... Um, the black toothpaste is common. Yeah, I don't think you want your teeth to stay black. I True. think it's a whitening agent, but... True. Okay. How about this one? This one actually has a title on it. This came from Minneapolis, the Minneapolis Journal. And it's that radio is going to replace gasoline. Wow. I, I don't know. It doesn't say... How <laughs> who predicted that was a scientist and made that true. <laughs> right? We'd probably be getting paid a lot more if that was the case, if we were the gasoline people instead. Yeah, buy some stocks and radio. I think that's what that's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Another one is... Beauty contests, baby contests uh, will be no more because everyone is just going to be so gosh darn beautiful in the future that there's just going to be no need for contests because they're all going to be beautiful. That is so interesting. <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think yeah. everybody is beautiful for sure. But back then, probably you could have made that argument as well. <laughs> yeah, they said we're going to need another one is we're going to need um, cozies to protect our kidneys. So we're just going to have to constantly wear something to protect our kidneys at all costs because they're very important. That is an interesting one. <laughs> My mom actually always says that you need a longer coat to protect your kidneys. So I don't know where that came from but it's certainly a belief of people yeah uh this one is pretty awesome someone predicted that the united states is going to have a population of 300 million and that's very close to what it is right now so props to that guy okay that guy had a crystal ball there we go they said canada would be 100 million Ooh, a little off a little off yeah america was more popular and uh i think this is the last 
last one here, the last one that I found that I thought was really interesting was the ways of communication. In, uh, in 1923, they predicted we are going to have watch size radio telephones on our wrists that we can talk to people through. They're correct. Everybody's got that. Apple watches these days. So cool. <laughs> if a real Christmas tree is still up, you have some options. You could eat it. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't out of all the ones that I was like preparing for, <laughs> that one was not on my list. <laughs> yeah, usually my real Christmas tree, we always just put it out in the yard, let it dry, and then we chop it up and have kind of like a our first bonfire of the year yeah. is burning the Christmas tree. Okay. Um, this suggests though that you could just have a little snack and get rid of rid of your tree and save on groceries basically. Okay. What are we how are we consuming the Christmas tree this year, Steph? Well, you can make it as a syrup and put it on your pancakes. Oh. So they say you would kind of boil some sugar and put some pine needles in it. Now, my problem with this is I've stepped on a like a tree pine needle before and uh-huh. felt it go into my foot. Uh-huh. It's not great. So to to imagine eating it and having it maybe stab me in the throat, like <laughs> well, well, no, it probably breaks down. It has to. There's no way they're just like, yeah, go eat pine needles. Like I can imagine maybe it kind of goes the way of rosemary and gets a little bit softer. But have you ever thought, mm, that smells so good, I'd like to eat it when you were smelling a tree? No, not a chance. Well, there's other options. You could think it smells so good you'd like to drink it. They okay. say you could boil some needles from your tree and make a broth out of them and call it tea. Oh, I was hoping <laughs> for like a vodka or something. A vodka. Ooh, that could be an option. Perhaps oh, you piney, should a piney vodka. write into them. Gin. Let them know. One lady says that she loves to make spruce tree ice cream. Okay, I could see that. I wouldn't eat it, but I could see it. Yeah, she insists, though, you should wear gloves when you're extracting the (laughs) needles because, of course, they're extra sharp. And someone else suggested making, um, adding them to your pickles. So if you were pickling eggs or pickling vegetables, you would put some needles in there and add some flavor. Yeah. Now, I like this option. Not to eat it, but to use it in cleaning. So they oh, are like, yeah. if you take a spray bottle, pine soul. yeah, fill it with vinegar, put pine needles in it. You'll have a better scent than your house smelling like vinegar. <laughs> that one I can see the eating it. I'm just like, I like the smell of Christmas, but I don't want to consume it. Yeah. I don't want to taste the smell of Christmas unless it's a gingerbread cookie. Yeah. Or, or there's the, always the other uh, option of just today's the last day for drop off of the trees that <laughs> you can. There's like seven locations around the region. Uh, so today's the last day. If you don't want to eat it or consume it in any ways that Steph presented, drop it off for free. We have the director of public works with us, Keith Smith. Hello, Keith. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Hot topic uh, I've noticed in my like two years here in Fort McMurray: winter maintenance zones. Keith, what is going on with them? That's what everyone is just shouting on the social media. Uh, but if all goes well, they're just a well-oiled machine, hey? Exactly. That's exactly correct. And right in the midst of winter maintenance right now. Uh, this has been a fantastic year with winter maintenance. I want to give a huge shout out to our residents. Uh, there's a lot of compliance. We're finding a lot of compliance when it comes to removing vehicles off the roads. And that is our number one issue is that when we go into these sub zones, when vehicles are on the streets, we cannot do our job sufficiently. However, again, a big huge shout out to our residents. They have been removing their vehicles. This has been the best year ever when it comes to winter maintenance. Wow, that's amazing. And I mean, it's thanks to signage and radio ads and social media and even signing up for those email alerts. There are so many ways that you can really make sure to remind yourself that only, what, twice a month? Twice a month. That's all we expect our residents to be off their streets twice a month, and we can do our job efficiently, open up these roads, and provide the service that we all expect. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's get like a little visual of what you're working with here. So um, when you go out, what has been a day of like removing vehicles? Because people forget, I'm pretty sure, probably every week to remove a vehicle from an area. What's like a number, an average number, or maybe you give us a high, a low, maybe an average of what you've seen in neighborhoods? Excellent, excellent question. I'll give you an example of yesterday. So zones three and four were active yesterday. So we went in zone three, and initially what we seen was 149 vehicles. And as you can imagine, you think of even a parking lot, that is a lot of vehicles to remove. 
and in zone four we only had 17 so that's the high and the low now of course as people see the equipment coming around especially the tow trucks they'll start moving their vehicles however if we have a zone which is typically 20 to 25 streets and there's 149 vehicles it makes it very difficult so for example yesterday zone four 18 vehicles uh, we were able to get those removed we got halfway through the snow clearing program which was fantastic However, with Zone 3, with 149 throughout the day, we weren't quite as successful. We got maybe a quarter to a third. So what that means now is that we have to go back to that Zone 3 times versus really if it's done probably once, twice at max. So it really slows down that efficiency. Yeah, and you were saying, you know, nobody wins with the tow. What did you mean by that? Towing is a, is a lose-lose. Uh, there's not often a conception, misconception out in the public that we as a municipality uh, receive money or make money from towing. There's no money to be made from towing whatsoever. The municipality doesn't receive money from towing. And the municipality's responsibility or really what we want to do with the winter rate maintenance program is to provide a service to the public. So that's how we measure success. So it's not uh, by the, that dollar value from tickets from, from towing. However, when, when, when it's vehicles on the street, everybody loses. The, you know, residents are upset their vehicles are getting towed when our maintenance are not getting done. And our operators, our operators work because they want to do what's right for the community. And if they can't perform their job commu properly, it upsets us as well. So we want to make sure that we do the right job for everyone. So there's no winning when it comes to towing. There's absolutely no winning. If the program was ran perfectly, there would be zero towing. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. And uh, what do you think, what do you think is the main message you want to get out about winter maintenance? Is it just to like, hey, remember to move, remove your vehicles and we can do our job? Or what do you think is the main thing? The absolute uh, main message is to remove your vehicles on your designated day. And as you said earlier, it's only twice a month, which is, is, is not a lot. That's, that's not a lot to provide the service. There's a number of other reasons, you know, when we talk about winter maintenance, is also to when you're shoveling your driveways or shoveling your sidewalks, don't push snow out into the roadways. That makes it more difficult for our crews, but it also makes it more difficult uh, for your neighbors. So that's another one. And also at the same time, I, I want to reiterate that our roads crews, our bylaw people, all municipal employees that's out on these streets, these are people that want to do the right thing. They are there to provide a service. They love their jobs. So when you're interacting with them, please be kind. Please, Boy. these are people's mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. These are residents of our community. So take that into account. Absolutely. I think that's so important. And I think as well, just the words, be a good neighbor. You know, if you do notice that your neighbor didn't remember to move their car, why don't you shoot them a message if you have their number? Because it's not, it would be so nice to get a message, move my car. Oh, I remember. Thank you very much. Then to come home and see a ticket on your vehicle. So post in the Facebook groups, get the word out. If you're out for a walk and you have a relationship with somebody, why don't you knock on their door and say, hey, they're doing winter maintenance now. Get your car out of the way. And it really helps everyone. And that bill is huge. You had your car well, towed last year. Sorry, don't want to out you, right. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, how much did that cost you last year? That It was a, a lose-lose situation. I blanked it from my memory. Oh, I, I okay. don't want to remember All right. It. <laughs> but anyway, wouldn't it have been nice if a neighbor had knocked on your door, Sean, and exactly. said, hey, I think you should remember to move your car. <laughs> yeah. Well, as you said earlier, we have the winter maintenance uh, zone alerts. We have the emails. Yeah. We have all this information to tell residents when their time of the, uh, time of month is to remove their vehicles. But also at the same time, we've seen that before, whereas neighbors will knock on doors and neighbors will phone, and then you have those Facebook groups. And as early as 7 o'clock in the morning, these guys are showing up. When I left this morning, uh, I seen the crews up on fireweed with the, with the vehicles going. So uh, there's more than enough uh, advance warning. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Director of Public Works, Keith Smith, in today chatting with us about winter maintenance zones. And thank you to your whole team who is working so hard to make us able to park on our streets <laughs> on other days and able to get through the roads to get to where we're headed. Perfect. Thank you so much. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.